Hey, I'm Gretchen Men, and welcome to a collaboration I'm doing with Breed Love Guitars. This is part four of a series on an introduction to finger picking. Part one, which we'll link below, covers some basics of hand position, tone, developing finger independence, and walks you through a number of exercises which are intended to help give you a foundation for some very widely applicable finger patterns. If you're new to finger picking or are more experienced but would like to ensure a really solid foundation, I suggest you check out that video to benefit most from this lesson. There's also a free practice plan and a tracker included. This lesson though can benefit all levels. For those earlier on the musical journey, it'll likely be just the right amount of challenge technically as you develop your picking hand technique and your finger independence and your smoothness of transitioning between chords. For those more experienced, there's a wealth of non-technical challenges that can help bring your playing to another level control of tone, dynamic shaping, expression, aspects of music that would all be well advised to take to heart and diligently make part of our practice and performance. The bottom line is always the right time to study beautiful music, so find the challenges at whatever level you currently are. Thank you for being here with me and let's dive into this beautiful piece. But first, I wanna introduce you to this guitar. This is a Breedlove Pursuit Concert Nylon. It has a Western red cedar top and myrtle wood back and sides. This is a very comfortable guitar to play. For anyone new to nylon strings, it has a slightly wider nut like a classical guitar, but not so much so that it's going to feel like a totally different beast if you're used to playing electric or steel string. So though this piece was played on a classical guitar, you can use whatever guitar you have at your disposal. It'll sound lovely on a clean electric with maybe a little bit of reverb and some delay. And speaking of effects, the reverb that you heard on my playing at the beginning, this is from this Tonewood amp. It's a really cool device that attaches to your guitar and uses the top to amplify effects like reverbs and delays and all other fun, fun stuff. So we'll link to that as well. I did want to mention that because this whole setup, the Tonewood amp and the guitar is like less than a thousand dollars, which may be kind of pricey for some people, but acoustic instruments can get really expensive really fast. So um, one of the reasons I love working with Breed Love is they offer a range of instruments at very affordable prices and with sustainable woods. So a little bit about this piece. This is a smaller section within the larger piece. It starts at about a minute and 25, and the little bit of background I was able to find on it is that writing credit was to Roger Waters, and uh, the classical guitar was recorded by Joe de Blasi for Pink Floyd's album The Wall. It was actually misattributed to Ron de Blasi in the liner notes. Apparently, David Gilmour did play it live, but with a leather pick, not classical finger style. So the format of this lesson is I'll be using the traditional way of referring both to fretting and picking hand fingers. So fretting hand, that'll be one, two, three, and four, or first, second, third, and fourth finger. Picking hand will be P for thumb, I for index, M for middle, A for ring. I'm also providing a transcription I did, both with standard notations as well as tablature. That I'll have on the screen for you, and there'll also be a free download as a PDF, and the link to that will be in the video description. So I'm choosing to give this to all fellow guitar disciples for free, and I just ask that you consider buying The Wall or an album of some worthy artist or give a few bucks to a local animal shelter or just play the song for somebody who needs to hear it. And remember that music is a common language that connects us all. and You never know what good you might do with your music. I encourage you to start working on any new song with some active listening. That means not just really enjoying the piece, but listening for sections, structure, and areas that might be difficult to learn. If you have the music well in your ears and in your brain, it'll be much easier. Then I suggest making a simple structure chart. This is a plain language description of the sections of the tune and requires no music theory. Here's how I do it for this one. It's a simple A, A prime, B, a and ending structure. I've labeled the sections based on what made sense to me, but you can label them however makes sense to you. pattern is consistent throughout these four measures. We're going to do P-I-M-A-M-I-P-I, -I -I, starting on the D string second fret. So we're fretting an A minor chord. 
our second finger is on the note E on the second fret of the D string. We're going to play that with our thumb. And then our third finger is on the G string, second fret, the note A. We're going to play that with our first finger. Our first finger is on the, the first fret of the B string, the note C. We're going to play that with our middle finger. And then we're going to play the open E. And then descend back down. So middle, index, thumb, and then index again. So that full pattern. And then we're just going to move that bass note up one note at a time. So we're going to have now our pinky on the third fret of the D string, so the note F. And now we're just going to shift. We're going to have to shift our our second finger is going to take over from where our third finger was on the G string and then we're going to stretch up to the fourth fret with our pinky. So if that feels like a really uncomfortable stretch, um, just check your thumb position. A lot of times people tend to let the thumb trail too far behind, but if your thumb is in a good position more kind of in line with your second finger, um, it'll be not as bad of a stretch as it seems. So we're now on the fourth fret with our pinky on the D string, the note F sharp, second fret um, with our first, our second finger on the G string, and then our first finger still on C of the B string. So, and then the same right hand pattern, P I M A M I P I. And now we're going to go back to the previous chord. Moving from this chord, I then replace my second finger with my third finger on the G string because of where I'm going next. Mini section two, which just measures five and six, are going to be just um, an ascending pattern with the right hand and a descending pattern of the bass note. So the bass notes first climbed, now they're going to descend. So we, we now have... So that's just the same A minor chord with the E on the bass, right? So we have P, I, M, A, and then we lift our second finger, have the open D string. We're going to use our pinky now for the C on the A string, third fret. And now we're going to walk that down to the second fret of the A string, the note B. Section three is just this A minor chord. Finally, our bass note has reached its destination of the root. The only thing that's weird about this section is the right hand pattern. We're gonna do a pattern first of um, across five strings and then four. So because we have four fingers to play five strings in succession, I use my thumb twice. So that's thumb, thumb, I, M, A, M, I, thumb, and now it's four notes. So P, I, is that A prime is really similar to A. So you already have most of it once you have the A section. The part where it differs, so we start the same way. Here's where it differs. Fourth finger, D string, third fret, note F. Third finger, G string, second fret, note A. And first finger on the B string, first fret, note C. So we're gonna just climb, P, I, M, and then on the D string, hit the note E on the second fret, and then open, climb the arpeggio. So we have B, P, uh, P, I, M, A, and then we repeat that. Climb and descend. And then the bass moves down again, so we're gonna have with the fourth finger on the C of the A string, so third fret, second finger on the B of the A string, so second fret. And then it's a very 
similar mini section three where we're just, it's pretty much the same thing, but um, with one measure simplified. Really just climbing this arpeggio, descending, and then we end with a climb. So like this. P, P. Section B, mini section one, which is C major, a climb and descent. Now we're gonna move our second finger to the A string, second fret, and then hammer on with um, our fourth finger to the note D on the B string. Open E and then D, C. So lifting our third finger, or lifting our fourth finger. And then to A, um, I've seen this transcribed as A minor, but my ears tell me there's definitely the note B in there. So it's just like an A minor chord, but without the, that first finger. So just open, second finger, second fret, third finger, second fret, open, open. And then mini section two is just simply sliding with your third finger up on the G string to the note C, and then your fourth finger at the fifth fret on the note E, and I'm using the finger pattern, uh, picking pattern I, M, and then we slide down one fret um, with our third finger staying in place, hitting the note B at the fourth fret of the G string, and the note D on the third fret of the B string with our second finger. Move the whole thing down a whole step, so we're on A with our third finger, C with our second finger, and then the open strings. So that's G, B, G. Mini section three is exactly the same, and all we do for the end of that is we just slide up to the E of the G string, so at the ninth fret, and then hit the C on the eighth fret of the E string with our second finger, and then move that down. D on the G string, 7th fret with our 1st finger, and B on the E string, 7th fret with our 2nd finger. So we are almost at the end now. Um, section A is the same as it was at the very beginning, still section A, and the only difference is the ending. So um, I'll play it for you slowly, and then I'm gonna give you a couple of different options other than the way I play it to end the song, because I think there's different reasons that could be argued, and you could make a good case for different ways of interpreting it. So really the only difference is the ending. So instead of cycling back and forth on that A minor chord, you're going to play this ending. So I played it um, sliding up with my third finger on the G string up to the note E at the ninth fret, and then hitting the note A at the B string, 10th fret with my pinky, and then my first finger on the note B on the E string, seventh fret, and then sliding up to the note C, and then the very last chord right here. So open A, second fret on the note C of the D string, 10th fret, first finger on the note E of the G string, 9th fret, third finger on the note A of the 10th fret, B string, and then 
high E with your pinky on the high E string 12th fret. So I like to play it like that, but I, I think there's another way that might be a little bit easier or Really, as I was kind of figuring out fingerings, I saw that there could be a good case made for a couple different interpretations. So that's how I play it. Um, I think a, a way that might actually be closer because you can hear a really prominent slide from that C to the E. So what that is is sliding up from that C on the B string to the E of the, also the B string, fifth fret, then kind of rocking your finger to bar the fifth fret of the E string, the note A, and then A, B, C. And what I like about this choice is then you can just slide up with that C, um, I'm sorry, with the fourth finger. And that makes that chord a little bit easier to grab. I think the reason I chose to do it the way that I did is that because I'm playing this on solo classical guitar, I think my ear is wanting those resonances that, you know, when you're hearing the album and you have like the, the violin and the other instruments below, um, I don't miss the resonance of the classical guitar as much. So I think the reason that I chose to do this way is then you just have more notes ringing out. If you do it this way, you don't, you only have these two notes ringing out. But this is a nice transition. Another way you could do it, um, I'm not sure if this one just kind of doesn't have, have as much merit, but at the end of the day, it's all what's comfortable for you. So these are just options. So you could still slide up and then hit the, that A with your fourth finger. But you lose the advantage of having your pinky already on the E string, making this transition a little bit easier and having the other notes ringing out. Good luck with it. Go slowly and shape the notes as well as the spaces between them. Focus on good technique and smoothness of transition, but also invest real attention in dynamics, quality of tone, and expression. Even when you have the notes down, don't play this like it's a steady. Make it music. You can play in time and not be metronomic. Moreover, you can and should play with a metronome, but still have rhythmic vitality. There's so much to learn when you invest in musical subtleties. A great way to work on these kind of nebulous aspects I'm talking about is by recording yourself. When you have that kind of degree of objectivity, you'll notice things you might not notice in the moment. And the more you do that, the more you'll be able to start hearing and listening for those things as you play. This video has various chapters for easy reference so that you can revisit parts that are most difficult for you. Work on the transitions between sections too so things flow gracefully, not just within sections. Thank you so much for joining me here. If this video might have been helpful to you, and I hope it was, please like, comment, share, subscribe. It really helps creators be able to continue to provide free educational resources. I'll be doing more videos with Breed Love in the coming months, so keep an eye out and leave a comment if there's something in particular you'd like me to cover in a future video. Thank you so much, and I wish you all of the best, as always, on your musical journeys. It's an endless and beautiful path.